Here we are in unit six. Uh, we're going to start with reflect, reflection of light. So light, the basics about light are light comes in little packets of energy called photons. We often call them particles, but the truth is it depends on how you interact with them, whether or not it behaves like a particle or behaves like a wave. The truth is it's neither a particle nor a wave, but some sort of something that has the properties of both. Um, and another important thing is light does not have any mass. It still has energy and it still has momentum, but it doesn't have any mass. So these two equations here relate or tie into what we just finished with waves. So F is the frequency and H is this new thing called Planck's constant. And Planck's constant is um, sort of the basic fundamental thing that quantum mechanics is built on. We're not going to get into that, but you need to know that in order to find the energy of light. So when you measure energy, you measure energy in joules. And um, remember, frequency is hertz, which is one over seconds. So when you do um, H times F, you get uh, units of joules. And C is the speed of light meters per second. If you remember, the velocity of light was wavelength times frequency. If we take a quick look at that, C equals wavelength, oops, wavelength times frequency. Um, so that means wavelength is C divided by frequency uh, and vice versa. Frequency is C over wavelength. And so when you do that substitution, you get this, this second formula there. All right. So those are the formulas you need to talk about the how much energy a little bit of light has. Um, it depends only on its frequency or its wavelength. It's really not two different pieces of information. It's just one. So um, I can give you either or, and you can get it, um, as long as you have both of these formulas written down in your notebook. Like, don't memorize them. And definitely have both constants written down in your notebook. Pause if you need to. All right, so we're going to do geometric optics. We're going to do some drawing. And there's a little bit of geometry, a little bit of trigonometry, but really we're just going to learn it to use a certain button in your calculator. Um, so we're going to pretend that light is a ray. If you play video games, you've probably heard of God rays, light, like little beams of light. It's not really what light is. It's just sort of a, an illusion, but we can approximate it that way. So there's something called the ray approximation. So light, the particles travel in effectively straight lines um, unless it encounters a boundary between two different media. So if you're traveling in air, that's a medium. If you're traveling in vacuum, it's sort of a medium. If you're traveling in water, that's a different medium. If you're traveling in, in glass, that's a different medium. Or the plastic of your lenses, if you have plastic lenses for your glasses, that's a different medium. So the plural for medium is media. So the ray approximation um, gives us the ability to do some drawings. And these drawings don't really get to the heart of what's going on with light, but it really helps us solve the problems involving light. And it works just as well, especially if we want to build something cool like a telescope or a microscope or glasses, that sort of thing. Lost my pencil. Um, so this is a... Uh, picture of not what's really going on in any sense but if you think about the light being a wave and it having crests and troughs just like we studied in the last chapter so each of these planes here maybe is a crest of light where they all they all meet together and as they move forward the perpendicular to those planes will say are the rays of light coming in and we usually don't trace more than one ray of light at a time so coming from some source. So we'll keep it pretty simple. So we say a ray of light is incident uh, on a media, um, on a surface, on a boundary between two things. So the ray is traveling in one medium, we call that the incident ray, and it hits the boundary. When it encounters this boundary, a couple of things can happen, reflection and refraction. Um, we're gonna start with re reflection. So part of the incident ray is reflected and part of it is refracted. So we're just going to worry about the reflection for today. So part of that light bounces back off. And you've seen this anytime you look at a mirror or a, like a, a drinking glass. Some of the light goes through, but some of it bounces off. You can sometimes see 
your face in something that is shiny, right? So that's the reflected stuff, the reflected light that comes back off. The other thing that light can do is be absorbed. So if it's, you have like a matte black finish um, where it's not shiny at all, maybe all of the light is absorbed there. So there's two different kinds of um, reflection. The first we're going to say is specular, um, sp as in spectacles, like you wear your glasses. Specular means it's good for looking at, it's, it's useful, it's clear. So you want your glasses to be clear, right? So that's how, re how, re how I remember that. So specular reflection comes off of a smooth surface. You have to polish a lens or polish a mirror or wax your car to make it shiny. You have to make, make the surface nice and smooth. And then when all of the rays come in, they all bounce off at the same angle and they keep their shape. They sort of keep their formation. Um, so there's a, a picture of a laser bouncing off of uh, a mirror, probably. So you get nice specular reflection. We're not interested in reflection that isn't specular uh, because it doesn't make for good optics. It makes really, really crappy optics. Um, you can't build any good machines with it. But just for the sake of knowing that the words specular reflection um, you need to know about diffuse reflection diffuse is the opposite of specular it's for a surface that's very rough and obviously there's this continuum some things are kind of shiny some things are kind of diffuse and anything in between is possible so depending on how rough it is the more rough it is the more diffuse it is so if you look at this picture the laser doesn't bounce off in fact it bounces sort of in all directions some of it coming right towards the camera and you can see that shiny spot uh, coming right at you. So that's diffuse reflection is really no good for doing any math. Miss any other slides? I don't think that. What happened here? There we go. Um, still the same thing. Uh, still the law of reflection. So normally um, light comes in, bounces off. The angle that it comes in is measured with respect to this normal. Let me get a color here. This normal line, normal, if you remember, means perpendicular. Remember the normal force when we were doing some mechanics. So normal is perpendicular to the surface. So it's just like playing pool. If you've ever played pool, the light comes in, bounces off that surface. Now, you could measure, the other possibility would be to measure from the parallel, but don't do that. We measure from the normal. Um, and this seems a little bit silly to talk about now. If the two angles are equal to each other, why are we doing any math? Well, with reflection, the rule's going to be different, and so learning it this way makes it a little bit easier in the next step that we do. Uh, make sure. Okay, good. All right. The last thing is called the law of reflection, and it is um, the first of the real physics laws we're going to do, and it's super easy. The angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. Um, I missed a... Yeah, there we go. Make sure you get that down. Both the, the statement is super important, um, but the math formula sort of isn't. Um, but I'll ask you a couple of questions about these. So, all right.